This is Reasons to Believe, where we answer the question, does God perform miracles today? Hello, I'm Ed Foggs, and welcome to another edition of Reasons to Believe. You know, it's been said that there are angels all around us, watching over us to keep us from hurt and danger. In today's story, you'll meet a teenager who knows firsthand that angels can and do watch over us to protect us. Do you believe in supernatural intervention? Does God actually care for each of us individually? Find out on this edition of Reasons to Believe. I wanted to give you an opportunity today to receive a book called You Can Be Healed. And uh, it's Biblical Pathways to Healing. And you know, you can be healed. And the information at the bottom of the screen will tell you how you can get your copy of the book free while supplies last. Just dial the number on the screen and we'll send one out to you, postage paid, free of charge. You can be healed. Now, I wanted to pray for some of you. I know there are people who are going through a lot of trials and tribulations and struggle, things like that. And uh, let me say a quick prayer for you. Just receive this in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone who's watching the program. We pray that your healing anointing, your healing power would touch their lives today and that they would be delivered from the snare of the enemy and receive the healing that you died on the cross to give to them. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. It was a normal school morning for Matt Culver. He and his friend Aaron were going to catch the bus at this stop. However, this day they were late for their bus. They heard it zooming past their stop, and in their panic, they ran after the bus to try and catch it. While running across the street, Matt was hit head on by a passing vehicle traveling at 40 miles per hour. He never saw the car coming. The impact sent Matt flying 75 feet through the air. He landed motionless in a neighbor's driveway. The vehicle involved in the accident had several dents in the hood, busted headlights, a smashed grill. But amazingly, Matt escaped with only minor injuries and was released from St. Vincent's Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana, with no medical treatment. Now let's meet Max Culver and his wife, Mary Kay, and their son, Matt. <laughs> We're, it's a pleasure to have you all on our show. Welcome to Reasons to Believe. And uh, interesting story hit by a vehicle, hit by a car, 40 miles an hour, and, and virtually no injuries whatsoever. Max, uh, tell, us, tell us your version. What happened on the day your son was struck by the automobile? Well, it, and it was a real rainy morning. Uh, my wife and I, we were still in our room uh, with two teenagers. Uh, you virtually let them have the bathroom and get, get going. <laughs> and the first thing that we found out is our daughter was... Uh, running back into the room and screaming at the top of her lungs, uh, Matt's been hit by a car. And uh, my wife went into hysterics, and I virtually personally went into autopilot and picked up the phone. I hit 911, and I gave them our address, and I said, send everybody. And that they did. And uh, threw my robe on and ran out to uh, see what actually did happen. And when I came upon it, it was uh, very interesting because all the traffic was stopped. You could virtually hear a, a pin drop, it, though it was pouring down rain. And I got to, to Matt. I got down on my knees, and, and he was down there. And I, I said, Matt, how you doing? And he said, Dad, pray for me. And like any parent, uh, what, do you, you know, what do you do? And uh, though I, I began to pray, and asked God's, you know, God to help. And I got this tap on my shoulder from this fella 
that had also come to pray, and he said, I'm here to pray for your son. Now, now who was this guy? Where, where did he come from? Well, <laughs> that, was, that was my first question. Who was this guy? <laughs> because he even called Matt by his first name. And, and uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't know who this person is. You've never seen him, met him before, and he came and he called Matt by his first name. And, and well, what happened now? He, he said, I'm here to pray for your son. And at that point, I was, you know, just uh, when Matt had asked me to pray, well, how do you pray? But, but, but saying, God, help us. And he, the guy reached down and he got on his knees and he said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, be healed. And Matt, at that time, wiped the blood off his face. He looked me straight in the eye. He said, Dad, I'm healed, I'm healed, I can get up now. And like any good father, I said, don't you move until the ambulance get, gets here. And uh, we did wait on the ambulance, and uh, shortly thereafter, the ambulance showed up, and we took a one-mile ride to St. Vincent's Hospital because this had happened on West 79th Street, right. just a mile from, from St. Vincent's. And right. we uh, got to St. Vincent's, and uh, as the doctors began to check over Matt. Well, Mary Kay, during all of this, all of this is going on, you hear a scream from your daughter that, yes. you know, your, your son, is now this your only son? Uh, no, I have two sons. I have two boys. Yes, right. And okay. So okay. Matt's the middle child. And okay. then, see, if I, my daughter, um, in a way, was more calm than what I was. She just said, Matt's been hit by a car, kind of an announcement. And I, you know, I immediately screamed. And then the thoughts went through my mind. I thought, well, did he get run over by a car? And did it go veer off the road? I really didn't know. But then I heard, Max must have gotten out there, and Angie also came back and said he's going to make it. I had both of them saying he's going to make it. So immediately a peace went over me, which that mm. peace, you know, continued through our stay in the hospital and just, uh, you know, relief and just uh, like an awe, like, hey, God did this for us type of a feeling. Wow, so as soon yes. as she said, He's right. going to make it. You just right. believe it. It was fine. I believed right immediately. There was never more, any more doubt about it at all at, at that point. Well, you, you go to the hospital. Now, you, neither of you rode in the ambulance with your son. Is that right? We our daughter did. We Your followed daughter. directly behind it in my car. Okay, you followed, you followed the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Going pretty fast, probably. No, right? it was going slow. It, it was, was The siren <laughs> wasn't on. I said, well, there was no need for it to be on because it wasn't, you know, I guess critical. <laughs> though, though that one mile seemed like it was an eternity. Right, right. Well, what, what types of things were you, did you talk during that mile ride? Did you say anything? We, we must have, but we, I'm don't sure we don't remember what, right. what we said. We're uh, just amazed what God did. The, it we was, just knew we were in the midst of a miracle. Is what we really mean. believed we were in the midst of a miracle. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. You get to the hospital, and uh, uh, they take your son in, and they begin doing some testing, I assume. Yes. Run some testing on him, and I, and, and I know that that you, Max, were really involved in that part of it. What happened when you got to the hospital? What did they do? Well, as, as soon as I got there, uh, my brother, who also is a doctor, uh, joined us. And uh, I guess, you know, the first words out of his mouth is what happened. And by the time we, I went over the story with, with Bob, uh, the doctor came out and said, uh, well, we need to get, get, have some more tests on him. Actually, what, what, what happened? And we told him that Matt had been hit by a car, and he looked at me with a very puzzled face, and he said, not this boy. Did he fall down, or did he get hurt? What exactly happened? And we said, no, he actually got hit by a car. And he said, get this boy to the MRI CAT scan, and, and we need to, to, to find out really what is going on, because his initial examination, he couldn't find but a bump on the head, some scrapes on his face, and that was virtually all he could see. So he was probably pretty puzzled about that. Mm -hmm. Very puzzled because with that type of an accident, he was looking for uh, major, bo you know, broken bones, especially right, right, where right. Matt had impacted the car, broke a, you know, a, a, fra a compound fracture, fracture to, you know, to his legs, to his hips, or, or something. Right. Do you know what kind of car it was that, that hit your son? What, it was a 1987 car? Bonneville. Okay, so this was, we're not talking about a small... A small car. We're no, talking we're about, talking about a, a, a luxury uh, full, di uh, full sedan. Wow. That hit Matt. Wow, for, at 40 miles an hour. And I think you almost did more damage to, uh, to the car than it did to you. <laughs> but uh, well, Matt, <laughs> Matt let, let me ask you, what's the first thing that you remember? I know you were on your way to school, you're getting ready, you run out, get ready to go get on your bus, and you're running trying to catch your bus. 
then the accident happens. What, what happens? What's going on with you during this whole time? Well, I remember like getting at, walking us outside my house and knowing that the bus already passed and we saw it go by and we were going to go to the next neighborhood over from ours and me and my friend Aaron and I remember looking left and then after that was just black. Everything was just, I don't, I don't remember until my sister came and uh, all I could tell her is to, to do is pray. And all I could say, I didn't know what was happening or anything. I was just out of it, really. And um, all I could say is pray. Mm -hmm. And my dad came, and all I could say is pray. Mm -hmm. And so they began doing that for you, began yeah. praying for you. Did you were, you, were you in much pain at that time or, or kind of in shock? Or I was really you? numb all over. I really couldn't feel anything, like, at all. How long, Mary Kay, did, did, uh, was your son at the, at the uh, hospital? How long did he have to remain there? Well, he was, he was there like a, a little bit over a day because uh, he was there overnight, but you know, they did no treatment for him. There was no IVs. We just stayed up in a room. I think we had pizza that night or something. Our younger boy came, a bunch of friends came, that type of thing. I know Matt was still you know, pretty tired, a little sore from this, but, um, and overwhelmed. I mean, he, he came that close to death that I remember Matt saying to me, Boy, I could have died. You know, it was kind of hard to sleep that night because you look back on it and said, yeah, he could have died. And as a matter of fact, even his youth leader had asked him the question the night before. He said, if, uh, if you die tomorrow, are you ready to meet Jesus in eternity? And so, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're yeah. saying that the night before the accident, yes. he was, uh, yeah. where, where were you at, Matt? I was at church at uh, my Baptist youth group. Or, you were at church? Okay. Yeah. And 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 you were you were just sitting there just under normal circumstances yeah. and, and what what did he say to you? He walked up to me and um, he was like, "Hey Matt, um, come in and talk to you." And I, he was like, "If you're gonna die tomorrow, are you ready to meet the Lord?" And I was without a doubt. I said yes. And you never know. <laughs> we never know. We never know. We never know when our time is, 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 is coming. Uh, so you went to the hospital and, and uh, you were checked out. What was the extent of the injury to Matt? The, the injury to Matt was a, just a tiny hairline fracture to the skull just above his eye for about a quarter of an inch. And when the doctor checked it, the, the, uh, the fracture had to heal by itself. Uh, where he was bleeding about the head, all they ended up putting on it was a Band-Aid. Within a week, it was completely healed. Um, we, again, were in the hospital for just one day, and he was miraculously back in school within a week. The only restriction Matt had was for one year, for one school year, he couldn't take uh, phys ed, which Matt was glad about that, <laughs> and that was not a problem. <laughs> and, uh, but everything else was absolutely normal. That is amazing. That's amazing. Uh, you said, though, that when, after the accident happened, that Matt did spit up blood. He, he did. Uh, my brother and I, when the doctor came out so puzzled uh, at the emergency room, the doctor said, let's get him down to the CAT scan MRI room. And my brother and I, uh, being a doctor, we, I could go places where you normally couldn't go. And he and I, we were wheeling Matt down to uh, that that uh, CAT scan room with an orderly and as soon as Matt uh, got over there uh, Matt threw up and it was all blood and I began to really get get upset and I said oh my goodness I said he, he must be bleeding he said no the color of that is he has stopped hemorrhaging so mm -hmm. evidently at impact he began to hemorrhage and stopped mm. hemorrhaging amen and, amen, <laughs> amen. amen. So that, 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 could be, that could be an indication, and we don't want to read any more into it than we have evidence for, but that could be an indication that he had some internal injuries that were healed right there while he laid on the ground and, and, and hands were being laid on him and he was being prayed for. Yes. Is that the indication? We sure believe that. Wow. We yeah, sure that's, that's wonderful. 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 How do you feel this relation, this, this, this accident? has affected your relationship with God. First, Max, I want to ask you individually, 
what do you think, how do you think this has affected your relationship with God in terms of understanding better his faithfulness and that type of thing? Why don't you share with us a moment on that? Well, uh, we believe in miracles. And, but you really don't know and really don't understand miracles until it happens to you. And when Matt became our miracle, uh, I've had the opportunity to share this testimony all over the United States with several different people. Uh, virtually hundreds of people have heard about Matt's, I don't really don't even want to call it an accident. I really want to call it an encounter with God because uh, it really wasn't just an accident. We be I believe that this was probably planned for our destiny as a family, and we really believe that miracles do happen. Miracles are for today. Amen. 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 Matt, what has this done for you? What has this done? What is this? What has this done for your understanding of of who God is and how He operates? Um, it really like teaches me. Like, I know that God has a plan for my life, and I just don't have to waste it. And my life is for a purpose, or God would have left me out on 79th Street. Amen. 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 I want to get into more of this. We know that uh, angels do have a role to play mm -hmm. in helping us. And I want to get a little bit into that in a moment. But first, this break, and we'll be right back with more reasons to believe after this. Stay tuned. I wanted to give you an opportunity today to receive a book called You Can Be Healed. And uh, it's Biblical Pathways to Healing, and you know you can be healed. And the information at the bottom of the screen will tell you how you can get your copy of the book free while supplies last. Just dial the number on the screen and we'll send one out to you, postage paid, free of charge. You can be healed. Now, I wanted to pray for some of you. I know there are people who are going through a lot of trials and tribulations and struggles, things like that. And uh, let me say a quick prayer for you. Just receive this in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone who's watching the program. We pray that your healing anointing, your healing power would touch their lives today and that they would be delivered from the snare of the enemy and receive the healing that you died on the cross to give to them. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back to Reasons to Believe. And we've been talking with Max Collier, Mary Kay Collier, and Matt Collier about an accident that they were involved in. And we just thank you for sharing with us on the show today. I think we've got a couple of questions from some folks in the audience, and uh, we want to go to those right now and, and let them ask away. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, what did the person do who was driving the car that hit you? Well, that was Chaplain Larry Winery from St. Vincent's Hospital going to work. And uh, as he was going to work, and after he hit Matt, he, he pulled over to the side, and he stood right next to Matt, and I didn't even realize that he was the one that, hit, that, uh, uh, that had hit Matt, but he had told my wife, he said, I'm the man that hit your he son. He came up and gave me a hug, and, and, I, and I felt more sorry for him that, than he did for me, I think. <laughs> We virtually had yeah. to pray for him. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that's very blessed that he was that kind man enough to say, I hit your son. It could have been a hit and run. It could have been a whole different scenario. But it wasn't. Right. Amen. Amen. We got another question over here. And Max, you mentioned earlier about a person offering prayers. Uh, could you say more about that person and whether or not you have seen um, that person after the accident? Yes, the person that stopped for prayer was really interesting. He was a brand new Christian. The night before the accident, he was in a Sunday night prayer meeting. In the Sunday night prayer meeting, the pastor had a teaching on the powerful name of Jesus. And the pastor said this. He said, you will have things that will happen to you that you will not know what to do. When it happens to you, you pray in the powerful name of Jesus and you will see miracles. 
What had happened was as he was driving his car, two cars in front of him, he saw Matt fly through the air and his heart, as he told me, was coming out of his chest. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. I've got to pray in the name of Jesus. He pulled his car over, he got out, he came to me, he said, can I pray for your son? I said, most certainly you can pray. And he prayed in the name of Jesus and we saw miracles. <laughs> Amen. I want to get a little bit more into one of the questions that was asked. Uh, you talked about it, there was, it was the chaplain of the hospital that hit your son. Did he go with you to the hospital or what, what happened after that? Well, he, 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 he stood out in the car. I mean, he stood out in the rain for about a half hour with us. So he ran back home and changed clothes and then uh, when he came back to the hospital, it was really a, a sight to behold because all of the, the chaplains and all of the, the nuns surrounded him and were praying for him. And I always kind of wanted to say, <laughs> well, what about us? But I didn't go there and, uh, because God had already done our miracle and he needed to be comforted. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mary Kay, what do you really believe happened? Well, I, I really believe there was an angel that uh, really may have saw this start to happen. Maybe just was Matt's guardian angel or something that, that um, because when Matt was just hit on the leg and there was no injuries at all, uh, and just a little red mark. And then what really fascinates me from this whole thing is that when uh, he was thrown, you know, 75 feet across the street, well, there's so many obstacles he could have hit. There were these orange posts uh, that they used, this, these people that uh, the uh, driveway he landed in sell pumpkins, and they have orange posts to advertise their business. And so he could have hit one of those. He could have hit their wishing well. He could have hit trees. You see, it wasn't just at random that he was thrown through the air. There was, you know, God used an angel. I don't give glory to angels give, I give uh, glory to Jesus but um, he used an angel to I think just to kind of pick Matt up and carry him and, and then when he laid him down I mean he just barely had a little head injury I mean he could have just gone you know you know, like smack and had a major head injury, but he didn't. He just let, gently laid him down, and he had enough of an injury so that we could give the testimony, so people could visibly see something, and then mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, we could all believe. And let me add one thing: that the force of the accident. Matt was wearing some Reebok tennis shoes at the time, high tops. He literally came out of those shoes upon impact. They laid wow. on 79th Street as he come catapulting out of those shoes. He also was wearing one of those large um, starter jackets that the kids like to wear. Right. He, that ended up in the ditch as he was going through the air, and we believe carried by angels. Mm -hmm. he, the, 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 the coat was far from Matt when he landed, and the first thing I said Matt to Matt after I began to pray for him is, Matt, where is your coat? And it was <laughs> over in the ditch. And he was wearing it when he came out. Mm -hmm. Now, the, you're saying that the, the power of the impact took him out of his shoes and out of his jacket. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. $2,000, I, 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 I think I heard you say $2,000 worth of damage to the automobile. To the car. Mm -hmm. And a few scratches on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, where he was bleeding, uh, all, the, all they did at the hospital was they put a Band-Aid on it. And he didn't. He needed no stitches, and uh, so we we're just so thankful for for all what God has done. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful story? <laughs> wonderful story. We want to give you an opportunity in the audience right now, our television audience, an opportunity to meet this God that so miraculously intervened in the Culver's life and in their family's life, and His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth, lived a life as a man, died on a cross for your sins. And he not only died on the cross for your sins, but he was raised from the dead for your justification. And God says now that all men must repent and be saved by believing in what Jesus did when he died and was raised from the dead. You need to give your life today to Jesus Christ. There are some of you out there who are sitting 
looking at me by television who have never given your life to Jesus. And you need to do that today. And I'm going to pray a prayer with you and give you that opportunity today. I want you to repeat these words. It's not in the words that I'm saying, but it's in the condition of your heart. If you'll repeat these words and say these words after me, God will save your life and your soul today. Bow your head with me. That's right. Go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid. Say these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And I ask you now, Father, to come into my life. Cause me to be reborn. In Jesus' name, I ask you, Father, come in now. Amen. If you just ask Jesus to come into your life, he's done it. Go to church on Sunday, read your Bible every day, and Jesus will change your life forever. give you an opportunity today to receive a book called You Can Be Healed. And uh, it's Biblical Pathways to Healing. And you know, you can be healed. And the information at the bottom of the screen will tell you how you can get your copy of the book free while supplies last. Just dial the number on the screen and we'll send one out to you, postage paid, free of charge. You can be healed. Now, I wanted to pray for some of you. I know there are people who are going through a lot of trials and tribulations and struggles, things like that. And uh, let me say a quick prayer for you. Just receive this in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone who's watching the program. We pray that your healing anointing, your healing power would touch their lives today and that they would be delivered from the snare of the enemy and receive the healing that you died on the cross to give to them. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>